I am so excited to be having the opportunity to do this video with you. I have loved my time as a content creator, certainly have it's had its challenges, and I want to share all that with you to encourage you today and to just share some of my journey because this is why we're all here, and I hope that this inspires you and helps you and gives you something to think about. So let's get started. First, I wanted to share with you my why. So why did I start? Well, I was looking for something where I could stretch myself and continue to learn. As I'm getting older, those are some of the things that you can worry about. You know, how do you keep growing when your original career may be over, but you have a new career that's going to be able to stretch you, encourage you, and help you learn and grow new things. So that was definitely my biggest push. Also, I wanted to encourage others. It was what I enjoyed most in my original career of 30 years. And I thought that that is what made my career worth it. And so I wanted to find a, a new career where I could continue to do that and do it the way I wanted to do it with 100% of my effort involved. Also, I wanted to share positive things in an otherwise somewhat negative environment sometimes. I think that you can do so many things to bring joy into life and I wanted to be able to encourage others and just be a light in sometimes a dark world. And this has really helped me do that and it's even brought joy into my life. So let's talk about some of those things. So let's start with what's been hard about this journey. I would say the hardest part for me may have been learning video editing software. Anybody else with me there? Oh my goodness. I use DaVinci. It has just, it was just something I'd never had to do. I've, I've learned other types of techniques and I've learned new software in my career, but video editing is a totally different bird, isn't it? <laughs> so it nearly killed me. Another thing is just kind of the human psyche. So when I allow myself to feel like I'm back in high school, it's a popularity contest. It makes it a little bit hard. Focus on the numbers and you focus on some of the comments and you're like, they don't like me. <laughs> and it's a real thing. It, you know, no matter how confident you can sometimes be, it's really hard on your human psyche. So that was, that's hard, been hard for me. I would also say setbacks and confusion about why some videos hit and others don't. And the ones that I tend to spend the most time on are the ones that don't hit, right? Some of the ones that I do last minute and they're just, hey, this might be fun. Those are the ones that they get all the views and get all the comments. I, I can give you an example. I redid my craft room and my husband was working on the shelving and I had time on my hands. And so I was like, maybe I'll just take a quick video of this. And that video got far more, like 80 times more views than any of my other content. Obviously people are curious, right? They wanna know what people are doing and why you're doing it and how you're doing it. So it made sense after I did it, but some of my other videos that I work really, really hard on are not always the ones that hit. So there's just confusion and setbacks like that where you've spent a lot of time and you really don't get a lot for that effort. Also, I feel like this career leaves me a little off kilter and maybe that's a good thing. That's what stretches us sometimes, but there's always this feeling a little bit of confusion, like you're expecting to, if I do this, this will happen. Especially when you watch videos and they say, if you do this, you'll get a million subscribers. And then you do those things and you don't get a million subscribers. So it's always kind of leaving me a little off kilter and that can be hard as well. I would also say other YouTubers advice. So like I said, you do the things that they say you do that you have to do and these are the settings you have to have and this is what's gonna get you your million subscribers. It doesn't always, right? And I keep going back to, I, I did this for a reason. I know what I need to do. So why do I keep focusing on what other people are saying to do? And that really comes down to when you've lost a little bit of confidence, then you look elsewhere to try and find that missing piece that you might be missing, but you're not missing it. You just need to give this a little bit of time. So next I wanna talk about why do I keep on doing it? If, if some things are really hard, why do I keep on doing it? And some of you may be wondering, why do I care why she keeps doing it? Well, I think it's because we all need to know our why. Why are we doing this? Because if you don't have a really strong why, all these things that make it hard are going to 
stall your growth. So you need to come back to your why. You need to have it written down. It needs to be something you can refer back to and say, yep, so this little setback is not going to be the end of me. I'm just going to keep going because this is my why. It keeps me doing what I love, right? I said earlier, I love communicating. I love encouraging others. And so this career, and it's a career, right? This is what we're doing. This is what we've jumped into with both feet. I'm doing this because it's what I love and what I think I'm good at. So my content is a little all over the place right now, which it can be because I'm a small YouTube content creator. I love to know that my content can help one pet owner help give their pets the life that they deserve and the health that they want to give them. Or one card crafter, the inspiration that they need to make their next great card. Or just some of my silly videos where I just wanna give people a little bit of joy in their day. And this allows me to do that. So that's a big part of my why. Plus, I get an absolute kick out of the fact that my two grandsons, I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old grandson, and they binge watch my videos. And I think that is so cool. Like, so I'm Nana. They watch Nana's videos. And it just warms my heart because I'm encouraging them too. They're watching Nana do something that she loves. Also, my adult kids watch me and my parents who may be technologically challenged figure out a way to get notified that I have content coming out. It's just super cool and, and that really encourages me. Although this takes way more effort and time than I ever thought it would, it also gives me the flexibility that I knew it would. So if I wanna spend the day with one of my grandkids or if someone calls me up and says, hey, can you do this? Normally with my other career, I'd be like, no, sorry, I have to go to work. I can now say, sure. And then I'll work on my video, maybe in the wee hours of the morning, because I have that flexibility, because this is 100% about my effort and how much I'm gonna put in and the time commitment I'm gonna make. But if I wanna be flexible with that time, then heck, let's do that. <laughs> Another big why I continue with this is the contents from my viewers. And I know I won't always get amazing positive comments, but those comments are like a gift. And it helps me remember that people are inherently good and they want to encourage one another. And, and when I get a comment that's just encouraging and uplifting, it is truly a gift to me. And it keeps me going. And it says, yep, that's why I'm doing this. So to all of you that have made comments on my channel, you have no idea how important that is to me. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. This may sound odd, but I left a career of 30 years. And so I left my entire friend group when I did that. And so this feels like I have friends all over the world. I get comments from people in New Zealand and Australia and here in the United States, but they all feel like friends. You know, when you have people that are saying, yeah, I do that too, or yeah, thanks for sharing that, I didn't know that, it feels like you have friends everywhere. And that's a really cool feeling. And really important is it gives me an opportunity to learn and grow and be anything that I wanna be. And I'm proud of the content that I've created. I'm proud of how I keep learning. And when my video editing software constraints, because I don't know how to do it, gets me. And when I figure it out and I make that one change and I'm able to add a little bit to my videos, that is really cool. And that keeps me going too, because that's me learning and growing. Also, I'm an introvert by nature, and I think a lot of content creators may be introverts, and it allows us to be just a little extroverted, just stretch ourselves enough that we get to shine. Because a lot of times it's the extroverts that shine, but us introverts, we listen more, we hear more, we truly hear what people are saying, and we're sometimes absorbing more than some of those extroverts that are being extroverts, which is okay too. It's just us introverts, sometimes we don't always get the, the opportunity to shine. But being a content creator and being behind this screen and then putting ourselves out there, that's a way for us to be more extroverted for sure. It's also empowering to know that I can persevere even when I get a negative comment or not a lot of views or not enough subscribers, I can persevere when that little high schooler in me comes out and I feel insecure about things. 
So that's, that's empowering as well. It's the smile on my face when I open up my YouTube in the morning and I see that I got another subscriber or I got some views on some content that I just put out. That's empowering as well. And that's what keeps me going. So thanks to all of you out there that made me smile each day as, as you watched my content and you took the time to make those comments that feel like a gift. When someone subscribes to my channel, I want them to feel like they made the right choice in taking the time to subscribe to me. So those of you that are newer to this, or if you're considered a small channel, or you haven't yet dove into this yet, these are some of my suggestions to you. And please know that I'm, I'm saying this with all the hope that I have that you will jump into this as well, because we need more of us out there making content and enjoying this process. First of all, embrace this time, because this is the time you get to learn, you get to grow, you get to try new things, because it's not about the money, that's for sure yet, right? And it's also, you haven't figured out your niche yet, or maybe you have, but maybe you haven't narrowed down your niche completely. And that's kind of fun because those of you that know my channel, uh, my niche is all over the place. I am trying all the things that I love and some of it's working and some of it isn't. And that's okay because I'm a small channel. I am not monetized and it's okay to have fun and, and learn and understand your audience and understand what's working and what's not working. So it's a great time to that you really should embrace. I would suggest that you keep learning. New techniques, new software, it doesn't need to cost a lot of money. A new microphone for your phone to use with your iPhone or with your mobile phone. A new light. There are some very inexpensive lights out there. So look at some new lighting in your own house or wherever you create your content. Just keep learning, keep improving just a little bit with each video. Your audience is also super important. So learn them, learn who they are. YouTube gives you just a ton of information. And I would say also, those of you that haven't tried this out, vidIQ has been really helpful to me. vidIQ just gives me some more details, more statistics, more analytics than even YouTube gives me. And that really is helpful because you do wanna know who your audience is is so that you can tailor to them. You want to know when they're watching so you can publish your videos when you know that they're watching and they're online. But you are important too. So it's important to really make sure that your niche is about what you love and what you're passionate about. If you're really just going after the money in this, then I think eventually it'll be really hard to continue because you kind of have to have a passion to keep going with this, right? If you're looking at this for the long term, you need to understand what your passion is and you need to have something that's gonna keep that enthusiasm going, keep you being able to create new content. And if you're just kind of copycatting other people or you aren't really sure what you're doing or why you're doing it, or what works or looking at the analytics, I think that enthusiasm is eventually gonna wane. You need to be able to enjoy that content enough to be able to continue to create. I see people scrambling to find content or to find content that's all the rage and oh, this is gonna get so many views, but I think it's more important to be authentic. Be authentic to you and why you started doing this. Share what you're passionate about and share what you're good at or what you want other people to know because being authentic is what I think draws viewers to you. They wanna see people that are truly passionate about what they're doing. They wanna follow people that are interesting, that are sharing authentically with you. Not just a copycat, not just doing the shock and awe thing. I think they wanna see people that are authentic and they want to know more of you. This next one I hope doesn't offend anyone, but I think you need to take other YouTubers' advice, mine included, with a grain of salt. Take it as information that's good to know, something that maybe you should research a little bit more, but it shouldn't be the end all be all. I sometimes get wrapped up in that a little bit because you think when their YouTube channel says, this is what you have to do to get a million subscribers or a thousand subscribers or a hundred subscribers, whatever they say, sometimes it's not gonna work because your channel is specific to whatever it is you're doing. And their channel may be very different or other people's channels might be very different. So when you're saying staying authentic to yourself and your niche and your content, then 
I think some of that information's helpful. Certainly keep learning, keep stretching yourself, but I don't know if you should put all your eggs in that person's basket. Dabble in a few things, but as long as you're staying true and you're creating quality content, you're being consistent with your content, then I think that's way better than trying to do these magic things that are gonna all of a sudden get you a million subscribers. In my opinion, this is a slow and steady race. You'll eventually get there. So give yourself a little bit of grace, give yourself a little bit of time. And I know it's, it's a lot of effort and it takes a very long time. I think at the end, you're gonna appreciate the fact that you stayed true to yourself, that you did this kind of on your own and you did it being authentic. I mentioned this earlier, know your why. Why are you doing this? Dig down deep and really think this through because you're gonna need this during the ups and downs. You're gonna need this when you get a negative comment. You're gonna need this when you put out a video that took you a lot of time and it gets very, very few views. It's just the way it is. So you need to have that why, you need to have it posted, you need to have it in front of you and you need to refer to it because it is gonna help you get through some of this. This journey can be a little bit of a roller coaster. Even better, find that person in your life that's going to help you on the days that it's hard and they're going to help you on the days that it's good too for me that person is my husband he sends me texts every morning and says hey this is how many views you had yesterday and hey you got another subscriber or this is what i loved about your most recent video and when i have self-doubt and when my confidence is waning that is really really helpful and even when i'm having a great day and he's excited and i'm excited it catches it's contagious and that's important so find that person in your life it may be a your child, it may be a spouse or a significant other, it may be a bestie, it may be you know your parents, whoever that person is, really go to that person, let them be that person for you because it feels good to them and it feels good to us, right? Don't lose sight of the fact that that person is really important to us in this journey. And tell that person when you're feeling doubt. Sometimes it feels like we're being stupid, like all the silly things in our head are coming to light and, and that's okay, that's what they're there for. They're there to help us get through some of our self-doubt and some of our tough times. And they'll help build you back up when you need it. If you don't have someone like that in your life, put a comment below for me and I'll be that person for you. I'll cheer you on because everybody needs that person. And make sure you don't listen to the people in your life that maybe aren't as encouraging. I've had people tell me like, get a real job or um, is, is that considered a career? Like, what do you really do? So just don't worry about those people. They don't understand the effort it takes. They don't understand the creativity, the time that you put in. Like I put out sometimes 10 or 20 minute videos, but it's from four to eight hours of video content that I cut down to 10 or 20 minutes because none of us have enough attention span for more than uh, a 10 or 20 minute video sometimes. But all that content that I created and I cut it down, right, to these small amounts of that people are interested in. And then video editing, sometimes I'll spend 20 hours on a video and they're again, 10 or 20 minutes long. So that's a big investment of time. There's a lot of creativity involved. There's a lot to know and a lot to study. So don't let anybody, any of that negative self-talk or negative talk from others. And some people don't mean to be negative. It's just, they don't understand what it is that we're doing, right? Lastly, just do it jump in and start creating videos. And if you're only dabbling right now and you're getting a little frustrated, start being consistent. Put out a video a week or a video a month, whatever it is that you can manage, be consistent. It feels amazing when you can say, you know, put it in your calendar that you're gonna do one video a week. And when you do that one video a week, it's like, yes, I accomplished that. Me, all by myself, I accomplished that. And that is huge. Momentum is important. And don't overcomplicate it. Put out content, make it quality, but don't overcomplicate it. Don't make it be the, that it has to be the most perfect content you've ever put out. Yes, you wanna improve kind of on each one and you wanna make them quality. You, you wanna be proud of what you're putting out. Don't just put out content to put out content. Don't let things hinder you from actually getting content out because that can happen real easily when you let the self doubt come in or you're like, why does it matter? Nobody's watching it anyway. All those things, just set them aside. 
You do the content for you. You put out that content because you know it's getting you somewhere a few views at a time. We got to get those hours. We got to get those subscribers and we'll get there if we're consistent and we're doing what we love and we're doing it the way that we know we should. I spoke a little bit to consistency, but I think this is really key. I know for me, sometimes I'm like, why do I bother with this? I could be doing so many other things, but it's the algorithm, right? We're all fighting the YouTube algorithm. It helps, it really does. I started out with inconsistent content creation and putting out videos fairly inconsistently. I started with like three and then I do one and then two. And then I finally started just telling my audience, I am creating two videos per week. And so I have consistently been at two videos per week. And that is really important, especially when you have, even if you have you know, a few subscribers, Obviously, we're under 500. I think at the time of this video, I was at 450. You know, they're waiting for that content to come out. They've subscribed. They'll get uh, notifications when our video comes out. So it's important to have that video coming out at, at the time that you've committed to your audience. My hope for this video is that you put out your first video after seeing this or that you feel encouraged from this video because you have less than 500 subscribers and you know what it feels like. We're in this boat together. So let's encourage each other. Let's just do this, right? Let's keep going. It's a little bit at a time. I heard a very scary statistic that only 17% of content creators on YouTube actually become monetized. And that set me back a little bit and it probably sets you back a little bit, but you know what? I want to be one of the 17%. <laughs> so I am going to just keep plugging along, keep putting out my two videos a week, keep getting just a couple hundred views of each one. That's okay. That's a couple hundred people watching what I put out. And that feels good. And I'm not losing subscribers. I'm consistently gaining one or two subscribers a week. And that's okay. And sometimes I get a ton of subscribers all at once. And that's great too. It's from a video that did really well. That's great too. And we look for those and those can be really helpful when they come, but really it's a slow and consistent race. So let's be encouraged. Let's keep going because we can do this. This is not easy and it takes a lot of grit but you've got this. And I am subscribing to small YouTube channels as well because we all need encouragement. And if I see somebody creating content and it looks like they're doing what they're passionate about and they're doing the very best they can, then I subscribe to them because i that's who I'm looking for. I'm looking for authentic people and maybe it's not something I have any interest in, but I like to see people that are passionate and positive and doing what it is that they love. So I hope that's you. I hope I've encouraged you today and we've got this. Thanks so much for watching me today. I really appreciate your time. And thanks to all of you that have subscribed and watched my videos. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. One day, one day we'll be monetized, but until then we're having fun along the way. Thanks again. If you found today's video helpful, please click the like button. Also subscribe as I create new content twice weekly. My content includes other hobbies and adventures that bring joy to life, such as engaging creatively through crafting cards, helping my dogs live their best lives, and enjoying the thrill of travel as we explore the U.S. in our Airstream travel trailer with our five dogs. I look forward to bringing you along this fantastic journey with me. See you in the next video.